Hello, viewers, and welcome back to Front Page News. Today, we've got a bone to pick with a liberal minister who is playing a dangerous game of hot potato. Imagine you're playing a game of hot potato with your friends, and as everyone is trying to pass it on before they get burned, one of your friends suddenly decides to throw the potato at you and then blames you for dropping it. That's exactly what the liberal minister is doing by claiming Canada is in an affordability crisis, but expecting the provinces to do all the heavy lifting. Instead of taking responsibility and finding solutions, the liberals seem always to prefer playing the blame game while Canadians suffer the consequences. And in today's video, we're not afraid to ask the tough questions and challenge a government fond of playing politics with people's lives. So stick around as we delve into the crucial insights of the affordability crisis in Canada, as well as major updates you need to know. In a recent exclusive interview, the federal government's Minister of Families, Children, and Social Development, Karina Gould, acknowledged the challenges Canadian families face, especially those with lower incomes, trying to make ends meet amidst the high cost of rent and food. Even Canadian families in the middle class are feeling the squeeze, and according to Gould, this is why the government's recently tabled a budget that focuses largely on people's finances and expenses, with the aim of making a significant impact on their ability to make ends meet. One of the key measures is the grocery rebate, a one-time payment through the GST tax credit system aimed at helping low- and modest-income earners pay their bills. The rebate would see eligible seniors receive $225, while a single person would receive $234, and couples with two children could receive a payment of up to $467. But there's more. Several cabinet ministers, including Gould, stopped at grocery stores this week to promote this measure and the Liberal government's other affordability measures. However, Gould emphasized that the grocery rebate is just one piece of the larger affordability puzzle. She cited the Canada Child Benefit as another example of the government's efforts to help families. According to Gould, certain affordability-related measures, such as disability benefits or housing policies, need to be implemented in collaboration with provincial and territorial governments, and here's the funny statement that has shown how out of touch and funny the Liberals can be. Karina Gould, during her interview, openly stated that she believes the federal Liberal government has already taken important steps, but it is left to the provinces, which must do more. Gould emphasizes the importance of working with provinces and territories to address issues like social assistance and support for the charitable sector. She also acknowledges that the federal government is not the only player in this area, and highlights the need for partners at the provincial level to make changes to their programs to help the most vulnerable Canadians. So let's summarize this. Apparently, the federal liberal government run by the Trudeau liberals for eight years created the affordability crisis, and they finally accepted that grim reality. And now, they have made such a mess, they can't fix it that they want to shift blame to the provinces and somehow make them fix the federal mess. The truth is no longer hidden, but the liberals are now hiding from the truth in their never-ending game of passing the buck. The provinces weren't the ones lavishing taxpayers' dollars and printing more money last time I checked. At the same time, neither did they introduce any of the major selfish policies of the Trudeau government that have brought Canada down to the grim state it is right now. The cost of living in Canada has increased in recent years, with wages not keeping up with inflation, making it difficult for many Canadians to afford necessities, let alone save for a down payment on a home. And of course, one of the most controversial policies of the Trudeau government related to housing is the introduction of the foreign buyer's tax. It imposes a 15% tax on foreign nationals buying residential property in certain areas of Canada. The tax was introduced in 2016 and has contributed to a shortage of rental properties in many areas across the country. Additionally, Canada has seen a significant increase in immigration in recent years, with many newcomers settling in major urban centers such as Vancouver and Toronto, where housing is already in short supply. According to Statistics Canada, there have been over 300,000 immigrants to Canada since 2019, the highest number since the early 1900s. And of course, this has driven up demand for housing and contributed to rising prices, but Trudeau and his liberal minions won't control the excessive influx of migrants into the country. They would even have to be forced to bring up lasting solutions on several occasions, and it doesn't end there. There's also the mortgage stress test. In 2018, the Trudeau government introduced new mortgage stress test rules, which require borrowers to qualify for a mortgage at a higher interest rate than they will actually pay. This was intended to ensure that borrowers could still afford their mortgage payments if interest rates were to rise. However, the stress test has only made it more difficult for Canadians to obtain a mortgage, particularly first-time homebuyers. Also, 
the Home Buyers Plan program that allows first time home buyers to withdraw up to $35,000 from their registered retirement savings plan to use towards a down payment on a home has continued contributing to rising housing prices by increasing demand for homes. And the most recent consequence of the Liberals' policies, which has led to an affordability crisis and Canadians struggling with the high cost of living, is the sad reality of seeing more Canadians in Toronto now accessing emergency food services at the Daily Bread Food Bank than ever before. According to the Daily Bread Food Bank, close to 270,000 residents visited the food bank last month, making it the highest in the 40-year history of the organization. Before the pandemic, the food bank saw approximately 65,000 client visits per month. However, that number has multiplied by four since then, and they are now calling on the government to take immediate action to save Canadians in the area. But there's more. The Daily Bread Food Bank isn't the only food bank sounding the alarm on the unprecedented use of emergency food services by Canadians. In March, the Mississauga Food Bank also reported that roughly 3,900 more residents used the facility this January, a year-over-year -year increase of 41%. The Mississauga Food Bank reports feeding 13,326 people in January. Apparently, all of these have resulted from the Liberals-induced higher inflation and issues related to supply chains from the incessant increase in the carbon tax, which has proportionately led to an increased cost of groceries. And while some provincial governments actually cut fuel taxes, gave home heating rebates, and other measures that actually helped. The Liberal government, on the other hand, prefers sending out a few paltry dental checks, without actually helping Canadians in the long term. Precisely, the audacity of a Liberal minister like Karina Gould to point out the affordability crisis Canadian families are having as if the Liberal Party had nothing to do with it through a continuously rising carbon tax, food inflation at all-time highs, rising interest rates, and owning $1.2 trillion in snowballing Canadian national debt is beyond ridiculous. I mean, it's her government that is imposing a drag on Canadians' quality of life with a stupid carbon tax. Therefore, the Liberals should cut their ridiculous carbon levy to start with so Canadians can heat their homes. This is what Canadians are asking for from the Liberals, not playing blame-shifting games and refusing to accept responsibility for their fiscal mismanagement of the country. Please tell us what you think about today's video viewers, and please give us a thumbs up if you agree that the Liberal government should scrap its increasing carbon tax farce that hurts hard-working Canadian taxpayers. Also, subscribe to our channel to stay updated with our latest content. And we also have a Telegram group for those interested in engaging in uncensored political discussions. You can find the link in the description below. Thank you for being so supportive. See you in the next video.